All right, so we're back with some new content. Um, we decided to uh, put uh, put our skills to the test, and uh, we're gonna show you a little bit about what we learned about Prime bows. Um, Prime is one of the big names out there. Uh, we we had a couple years of working with different other brands of bows, and actually had an opportunity to get our hands on a prime and help out a friend with with his bow and it seemed to be a bit of a challenge and that's kind of what we like to do yeah. <laughs> we're when we get something that we don't quite know exactly how to work with then we really kind of take it to the next level and try to work out those problems so um the thing, the thing about the Prime that we heard, and Kenneth mentioned they're a big company, we, they have a good reputation. Um, the reputation of being the most accurate bow on the planet. Um, and a lot of guys that are Prime, that, that swear by Prime will tell you that they are an extremely accurate pr platform and they really tune the way they do. Um, after we started to dive into research and Prime, we found that there, it's kind of a mixed bag. Some will say they tune right out of the box. Others will uh, share experiences of how difficult they're or difficult of a time they're having of tuning their prime. And that's part of part of what our experience had been too. You, we quickly learned that you can't use the exact same techniques with these types of bows as you can with other other mainstream bows out on the market. So we wanted to impart some of that knowledge, kind of help the average guy like us, kind of, like I said before, shorten the learning curve and be able to work on their own bow, be able to be knowledgeable about how things work and how things should be set up so that if they encounter problems that Maybe if they're kind of like us, they don't have to drive an hour and a half to a, a, a bow technician or the prime dealer, or, the prime dealer mm -hmm. or find some place, help people figure things out. So in, in our experience, we've had, we've had this bow and I have a CT5, this is a CT3, and we've, I've actually set up my CT5 before and had some quirky things happen with it. Decided that I needed to do something different. I got onto YouTube, looked at different videos, and I couldn't find a consistent uh, consistent process to tuning the bow. So recently I found on Prime's website, and it wasn't as easy to find as some of the other, uh, some of the other big name brands have their spec sheets. It's pretty easy to find. I couldn't find this one as easy, and so I pulled up the spec sheet and I started learning some interesting things about what Prime recommends for setting these bows up. So that's where we're gonna get started. We actually invested quite a bit of money, both of us, to actually set these up as our, our target bows. We wanted to take part in uh, a 3D shoot. Uh, North, Northwest Mountain Challenge. <laughs> I got them all mixed up. <laughs> Anyway, we're still waiting for dates, by the way, if anybody yeah. knows, let us know yeah. when we can sign up for that. So anyways, <laughs> so that's our intention this year is to set these up, take them to a 3D shoot and shoot them just like everybody else there. And we pretty much committed to do that. So look forward to that content. We'll put it, we'll put it on the, we'll put it on the YouTube. All right. So we're going to. We'll, we'll probably cut here and jump to the to the specs. Some of the things that I like about Prime is I like the wide platform. I do like the feel of the grip. I like the idea of having the grip in the center of the bow. And I like... What, what does that do when that you notice when you draw it back? What is, what is the benefit of that? So when I draw this bow back, it is very well balanced. And what that does is it helps me center or settle that center pin very quickly. And there's really, I mean, it really holds on target 
it's almost effortless. Yeah. It, it finds it finds that spot really really quickly, really easily. And it will hold on target for as long as I need it to, much more than any other bow. And that's the thing. It, it's turned into this kind of quest. Oh, well, quest and <laughs> almost this love hate relationship. I love love certain things about this bow. And then there's certain things that just make me scratch my head sometimes. So also, if there's people out there watching that own these these bows and say, hey, you guys uh, missed this or did this wrong. When you see the setup and you see the tuning, please comment, help us, help us out. I mean, this is a, this is the next level. <laughs> We're, we've kind of gone in into the deep end. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> You can see on this, we've got the, the bow and the bow vise. You can see here that uh, the top cam is quite a bit larger than the bottom cam. And uh, so what that comes to is there's a little bit of difference in the timing. And so we, we kind of had to do a little bit of searching to find out exactly how to get the right kind of timing on these bows. And so what what happens with the different size cams as far as the string geometry? So if you get the bow, let's see, I'll eyeball it there. And we'll get a bubble right here. I'm just gonna set this up to the riser and see if I can get it level. So that's pretty close to, to level on the riser. Now when I clip this to the string back here, So you saw the front, it was actually level off the front of the riser and now the bubble's riding really close to the back of that line. So the reason that is, is because the distance between here on the bow, this cam is smaller. And the distance up here, this cam is larger. So it actually puts the string slanted slightly to where this is, this is not quite level. So those, if you saw our previous video when we set up the Matthews, this type of tool isn't going to be as useful. In fact, it's going to be a little bit misleading. All right. So I'm going to take that off. Let's see. What I want to do, and I've taken, we had, I've had this bow already set up, but after we found a little bit of information off of some of the, the threads, off of the internet, to talk about tuning that actually led us back to the prime the prime website that we actually got the specs for how these are tuned and how how things should be in relation to the bow um, and we can actually put a link to that that information if you own a prime and you're you you're you're curious about where things should actually be we, we can we can even do a screenshot and we, we can throw that in now what we should do first is we should probably talk about the timing. And I'm going to move this a little bit here. Just drop it down in there. How's that? Okay, that's fine. All right, so what we found is that when you're timing, and I don't know if, that, if you can see that, there's these little marks. There's a mark right here and a mark right here. And if you go to the next cam, there's a mark in the middle of that, that uh, string loop cam and there's another mark right here. So what you're supposed to do to time these, this is one of the things that we got off of the spec sheet from Prime, is you're supposed to line these things up Now, if you'll see, I'm, I'm covering the string over that mark, and it's 
not quite sitting in the groove. And it, you can actually see it better on the top cam. You see that mark? The string is supposed to be covering, so I'm covering this, the, the mark on the top cam, but the middle of the cam is not timed, okay? This will probably make a lot more sense uh, after looking at that spec sheet, but this string is supposed to pass through from the one mark to that mark to this notch, and that's what he's trying to explain. Through this notch that's in this one, or across that that he's holding up. So you can see that his cams, his cams are a little over rotated. That's correct. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw this, this bow in the bow press, and we're gonna take, to get those cams aligned, what, it, what it's telling me is these cables are too short. So I'm gonna take twists out of that while it's in the press, kind of press it, unpress it until I can get those cams aligned, all right? So, so I got the, the pressure off of these cables. And what I'm gonna do, prime these cables. So the best way to, the easiest way to do this is to take it off of that front part of the cam. I don't know if you can see that very well. So it was like up over the front loop. So I kind of unroute it, get the pressure off of it, and just kind of pop that out. So what we said is they're too advanced. So we're gonna take twists out of this string. So I've got, we'll probably take one, two, three twists out. <laughs> Probably freaking out like, what? <laughs> How about a half twister? I'm pretty sure as far as advanced as the cams were that one or two isn't gonna cut, cut it, so I did three. <laughs> oh, oh. Sorry, I'm <laughs> So we're gonna come to this top one and do the same thing. Let's see, I got my fingers in there. And that's, so this is the challenge of working on a different type of bow. And by no means are we certified technicians to do this. This is just things that we've learned on our own. So take it with, with that type of mentality. So I'm gonna take one, two, three twists out of this one also. And we're gonna thread that in there. In the cable. And this is, like I said, we just put this information out. Here's the thing. The closest prime dealer to me right now is an hour away, an hour and 20 minutes away. So if I had this bow and I was shooting I saw, oh, geez, there's something a little inconsistent about the shot. I'd have to load it up, drive an hour and a half, and, uh, and trust somebody else to work on my stuff, which I think for me and my brother, me and Josh, it's probably, that's probably the biggest problem for us is to, to, to let go and let somebody else take care of it. Now, like I said, there's good technicians out there. There's really good people. And in fact, there's nothing wrong with paying somebody or asking somebody to help you out. But really what we're trying to do is empower people to do things on their own and show you that there's ways to figure it out for yourself. You don't, you don't necessarily need to, not that it's a bad thing. And like I said, there's good good shops out there, but good people in them. Back to this, let's see. So I've got all the tension off of the limbs. I'm gonna check the timing with this string like we've been showing, and I'm gonna see if we can get this thing somewhat timed. So if you look, I'm right over the center of that. I'm pretty much over the center of the, the other reference dot. 
them over the center of this reference dot and over the center of the channel. So it looks like I've got this thing timed like they say on the spec sheet, right? Yep. All right. So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna talk about knocking points. So first thing I wanna do is I wanna measure my uh, axle to axle, which kind of is, that's the, the information we got off of uh, the Prime website and the specs. So the CT3 axle to axle wasn't at 18 and a half inches off of this string is the center of the knocking point, which like I said, I'm, it's interesting. It's completely different to anything that I'm, it's not 18 and a half. So 18 and a half, which you can kind of see where I had my D loop before, where the, the serving on the, on the main string is kind of separated a little bit. At 18 and a half, that was the bottom of your... That was the string. bottom of my knocking, or bottom of my D-loop knot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move that portion of the D-loop. So like I was saying, when Josh did his build, that knot should be facing you, the other crossover. They should be opposing. The most important part about that is when you shoot, if they're both on the same side, then it seems like they want to unspool. They want to twist around and that kind of messes with your peep alignment. I got my peep already aligned and I'm not going to mess with it. I'm just setting that D loop just like we did with the other so build. So if you look, that draw stop's touching right there on the top cam. Let's look at the bottom. And the bottom cam is off, oh, looks like, isn't it? Yeah, it's not quite touching. Yeah, it's not quite touching, there's some gap there. So, so we know it's timed. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen up that draw stop on the bottom, I'll get it. So where it's barely touching all. Now what I've done is I've just adjusted that to where it's just barely touching the top draw stop. Just barely touching. So now the draw stops are timed. So what Josh is talking about is we've seen videos where people time them off the draw stops just like you do every other bow or that uh, they've, there's a little timing. Let's see, let me show you. are right on the cable on that one. Yeah, so you see this right here, sync. I timed it, you see I've made marks. So right here, I, I timed both off of that that sink right there, and that's actually when the, the bow is at rest. So I made those marks when I timed them off of those, that, those sink marks. Well, apparently, like I said, we found that that's not the case. We've seen people time them off of these, these draw stops, the, the string cable stops. And you can see right here that that's completely different than that cable stop right there. So we're, we're doing it the way that, it, that the specs say, right from Prime. So let's just, like I said, we're gonna test it out. See we don't what know what's gonna happen. <laughs> right. That's the whole point. So I'm, like I said before, we can't use, we're not gonna use these tools to level it out. All we're gonna do is in relation to that knocking point and the burger hole is the thing that we understand to get our, the height of our rest. So the unique thing about the cam system on this, on these bows, since you've got, we already talked about how the top cam is larger than the bottom cam. So that changes. And the reason they do that is because the Synergy technology that Prime uh, touts as, as being the, the most stable platform is the hand grip is actually the center of the, the center of the bow, the center of the riser. riser. And so that puts your arrow above the center point. And that's why these cams are different sizes, which changes a lot about the way you set them up. So you can see how I'm adjusting this uh, SmackDown click. Each one of those clicks is that 
arrow moving down. So I, if you look on that side, so that's where the adjustment is, but if you come around to this side, what I'm doing is I'm looking at the burger hole and I'm trying to get that arrow directly through the center of the burger hole. That's pretty close. I want it a little bit wide. All right, so I'm gonna tighten everything down. This here, this flexus right what they recommend is if you, you start all the way down, what is it, a turn and a half out is center. The last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double check center shot. Now, if you guys can see that, the way we're looking down that stabilizer coming straight off of the riser, the arrow's kicking off to the right. We'll call that good for now.